Hey, welcome to the Oakley Podcast, uh, Trucking Business and Family. We are still coming at you from Mid America Truck Show here in Louisville, Kentucky. And I tell you, it's just a great place. We've met a lot of good people, uh, a lot of people that know a lot about trucking. But you know, I always got to throw in something different, a little bit of a curve here. And today, we're going to sit down with John Knoll. He is with Good News Distribution, and he's going to tell us what all he is doing. Now, first, before we get to get to John, uh, Megan is sitting in with us too. Megan Cummings out of the uh, Oakley office, helping us in recruiting yeah, now, and, and at her first truck show. So it's uh, been interesting to watch that too. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for listening and tuning in to the Oakley podcast. As always, I mean, it's just uh, a great to to know we got a lot of listeners out there. Uh, YouTube is big for subscribers. I mean that. Please keep doing that. Keep spreading the word. We really do appreciate it out there. A used semi truck is a great way to kick off your career as an owner operator on a budget. And buying from a reputable dealer like Aero Truck Sales ensures you're getting a reliable truck that fits your needs. They carry trucks from all the major manufacturers in the trucking industry and perform a thorough inspection of every truck on their lot to ensure safety and quality and give you confidence that you're getting a reliable truck that will last you for years at a price that you can afford. Being a longtime partner with Oakley Trucking and the Oakley Podcast, we trust them to provide our owner operators with a truck that fits their needs and matches our qualifications. So, whether you're a first time owner operator or just looking for a new to you rig, be sure to give Keith Wilson and Trey Visor a call at 573 216 6047 and let them know you heard it here on the Oakley Podcast. How about it, John? No, I appreciate you joining me. Let's talk about good news distribution. All right, well, thank you for having me. Thank you, Oakley. And, uh, trucking company and the drivers out there that will hear this either today or at a later time. Um, I tell you, you know, uh, not to cut you off, but introduce yourself. You know, let's hear a little bit about John Knoll. Okay. Well, John Knoll's almost 65 years old. I've been trucking for almost 50, 50 years, 40, 40 some years on and off, but full time for the last 20 as a company driver. Prior to that, I was an owner operator. We had our own equipment for years, so, but now I, uh, uh, distribute materials for the truckers. I found Jesus out here on the road and I've been looking for materials to help me grow in my walk um, at trucker chapels and trucking ministries and I've uh, found good stuff and wanted to share it with others and got into the distribution of truckers uh, Bibles, Christian materials for the trucking community. And Where you live at John? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Uh, then born and grew raised. Grew up there? And, yep. Grew up there, born and raised. Okay. Still. Uh, you got a family? I do. I have a wife, uh, a daughter that's 23 in the Navy, overseas oh, right nice. now, and missing her. Uh, I have two boys from my first marriage. As trucking truckers know, trucking industry is hard on family, but I have it uh, is. grandkids uh, from my oldest son. So Are a lot of them up around Michigan? Michigan Every, yeah, everybody's in Michigan except my daughter's out out in Okinawa serving in, in, in the Navy. Oh, wow. That's impressive. That's good. Yeah, I'm very thankful. My oldest son served in the Iraq uh, war as a paratrooper. And, uh, and so it's um, my family's always been about serving. What's John Noel do when he's got this, some free time at home up in Michigan? Ministry. That's, <laughs> That's my <laughs> hobby, my passion, my everything. I, we, we do vacations around our ministries. So. And you said you got saved on the road? I did. Yep. Really? Yep. Listening to uh, 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 audio from, uh, <laughs> I just forgot his name now, from Focus on the Family mm -hmm. um, years ago. Um, wow. Oh, um, I know you're talking about. I used to listen to him a lot. Um, he actually has his own, he's getting older now. Yes, but, yeah, yes. Yeah. He's separated. And, and uh, you can tell, yeah. I, We're oh, getting older too. <laughs> I can't think of his name. I used to listen to him all the time, uh, driving to work and back. But yep. I know exactly, focus on the family, yep. uh, who you're talking about there. But pulled to the side of the road and got on my knees. But it's been a progression since then. And, wow. Um, and do, you remember, was, do you remember how old you were when you got saved? I was 33. Wow. So... That's a good age to get saved. Yep, yep. <laughs> as long as you're still breathing, it's yeah. any age is a good That's age. That's exactly right. That's true. Uh, any age. Well, tell us about Good News Distribution and how you got started in that. Well, out on the road, I, again, I uh, was looking for good resources for me. It started with CDs and podcasts. Uh, well, it wasn't podcasts then, but it was cassettes, actually, when I started. But um, picking up materials for help me grow in my walk, and then I started sharing them with others. 
good stuff I found and and uh, just uh, God kept opening doors for CDs, um, thousands of them that uh, people needed distributing, and I knew they were good. I I checked them out before I passed them out myself, and and then. Uh, some New Testament Bibles. Me and my wife started buying Bibles, and it got pretty costly. And a ministry right in our hometown had uh, free Bibles available, New Testaments, and needed a way to distribute them. And I thought I could help them. So you felt you felt like the trucking community needed that. That if they didn't, there there just wasn't enough resources there. Yes, that's it. I know I did, and and I was looking for good ones out there. You know, and a lot of the Bibles were small print. Um, we couldn't read them, especially as we get older. And uh, so I found ones with larger print, and then we produce a Bible now the past five years that has larger print and more geared towards truckers with uh, helps for them when they're out there on the highway. So. How many uh, locations, I mean, do you distribute to? So so how does it work? I mean, do you, you have a, a group of people that... Many, many... Uh, Chaplains, road chaplains, they call themselves, or, or individuals that help me fill Bible racks. Some retirees in our hometown that fill Bible racks. Um, we partner with ministries um, in the trucking industry, and uh, they fill racks. I have about 135 that I know of that we keep um, somebody filling them at all times. But there's a, a group of at least 30 of us, plus all the different ministries. So. It's, it's a full-time deal to keep track of all that. And you're working full-time. Yep. And uh, I'm a company driver the past 13 years for a company that is Christian-owned and uh, support everything I do. Um, they let me use the truck as a rolling warehouse. While I'm hauling freight, I also haul Bibles in my in my storage compartments and cab. And, and, uh, so it, and they even route me to different areas to... If I need to get to a chapel or get to a, a, a ministry, um, we have distribution hubs, we call them, around the country. And they'll find me a load out and find me a load back, so they pay me to spread the gospel. How many Bibles do you think you send out, just on average? Well, it's been amazing. We One of the Bibles I've been working with for 12 years, we print 50,000 NASB New Testaments through Truckers Friends Network. And I'm one of their main distributors of those. I store them in our warehouse, and we partner together. And then me and my wife started printing a King James Plus. Because of coming here to Louisville the past 10 years, everybody down here likes King James. And I'm actually not a King James guy, but yeah. I wanted to give them something that they wanted. And we did it in larger print, but chapter headings, paragraph breaks, trucker uh commentaries in there so it's um, like a study bible yeah kind oh, okay. of like yeah, it's got a memorization area mm -hmm. and it's geared towards truckers and it's large enough print where you can read it and it's and uh, we've pr produced a hundred and ten thousand in five years wow. so we're very thankful for that awesome. are you, you seeing a bunch of them i mean getting picked up and used and yeah we hear you get a lot of feedback we don't get a lot um we would like to hear more but if, when we get to heaven we pray that we plan on hearing uh, quite a few of them but um, but yeah, everybody enjoys them that has them, the distributors that distribute them, like them. And, and, and they came out of me finding all the complaints and excuses people have for not reading the Bible. And so we made it easier for them. A so. lot of, yeah, we come up with all kinds of excuses. Yeah, yeah. we do. Guilty. <laughs> I, I'm right there. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Megan? What about your partnership with CRM Mission Cry? Uh, CRI has been a great, we had some surplus materials. We distribute dated materials like kids, uh, keys for kids and some teenage uh, that are dated by month or year. Um, our daily breads, just devotionals that, and we didn't want to throw them away. So I was looking for a place to use them and I uh, happened to call them and they were looking for somebody to pick up Bibles around the country and get them back to their warehouse. They're located in Fowlerville, Michigan. And uh, me and my wife became part of their ministry by, uh, right now we have a warehouse. We have a 24 hour drop off location. Uh, like somebody here just gave me uh, three cases of used Bibles. And we, we send them to them, they sort through them, uh, make sure they're readable and not marked up. And, 
Um, they sort them by theological training materials, mixed library of Christian books or study Bibles. Um, and they send them around the world. About 20 to 25 containers per year uh, go all different countries, over 176 nations they send them to. It's just a, a great ministry. But what they use our dated materials for is to fill the boxes because when they palletize these things in a container up to the ceiling, they don't want the boxes to crush and all the Bibles are different sizes and things. So it's really quite an art to fill a box so it won't crush. And, and uh, so they use those uh, devotionals and uh, dated materials to fill the boxes. And we've had people call to contact them and say that that one little devotional is all they had to preach from for a pastor at a church for six months and it's only a three month devotional and they, they they want another one because that's the only word of god they have wow. so wow. it's pretty is it, exciting is this something that they reach out to you guys for do you guys hand them out on foot is there a website um cri mission cry has a website but they're primarily focused on reaching out to nations um they don't do a lot in the states although they supply me now our ministry with spanish new testaments they're printing their own they couldn't get enough Bibles to supply their ministries out around the world. And so they started printing their own New Testaments, both in English and Spanish. And I use their Spanish New Testament right in West Michigan and, and through our other ministries um, because there is a lot of Hispanics coming into our nation and uh, they're hungry for God's word. And uh, so CRI has supplied me with uh, probably four pallets this three last fall and two more so probably five pallets now in the past eight months um to have, distribute. You, uh, have you ever made me think um because we had a uh, a guy come speak at our church about a month ago have y'all ever worked with the gideons yes yep i distribute how does their that partnership cards. work well i just just distribute their cards and we get surplus gideon stuff that uh, a gideon passes away like my uncle was a gideon and and he had a lot of resources that he's been handing out. But when he passed, we take his resources and send them to CRI, and they send them around the world. Um, but I hand out their Bible app cards because most truck drivers um, aren't real readers. They're more Listen audio. And, yeah. and uh, so I've distributed probably 20,000 of their Bible app cards. Now I print my own business card with 15 of the top Bible apps. From kids to blue sword, uh, eye sword to blue letter to all these different Bible apps that are free, and we share these with truck drivers to listen audibly. Um, uh, you know, Megan, the um, you probably know this, but uh, you go to a hotel room mm -hmm. and you pull out the drawer, and there's a Bible in there. Yep. that's from the Gideons. Yep. Yeah. Used to be, oh, yeah. used to be a lot used of hotels are taking them out now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah. Probably are. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, so it's uh seen many a many a Gideon Bible in my yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're neat because uh, you know you open them up, and if you need a topic, if you're depression or addiction mm -hmm. or whatever, it'll tell you what chapter and verse to go to to get some help. Yeah. And we kind of put that topical in our Bibles too. But uh, yeah, Gideon's is an amazing ministry, but we're nowhere near, and we're not competition. We have one boss, yes. and, and uh, there's there's right. need need for all these ministries Absolutely. out here. Oakley Trucking is a 100% owner-operator company. We specialize in hopper bottom, end dump, and pneumatic trailers. We provide the trailer free of charge, and you provide the truck. We have a large customer base that reaches the whole United States as well as parts of Canada. Our owner-operators live anywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Pennsylvania to Wisconsin and everywhere in between, and we get them home weekends. We take it seriously when you join Oakley Trucking because we need you to be successful. Oakley offers great benefits and competitive mileage pay so you know that when your wheels are turning, you're generating money no matter if you're loaded or empty. We understand that you want to make a good living and that you make our living. We only take on independent contractors and to be honest with you, we are very particular on who we lease on. You must have a good driving record, good work history, and clean, dependable truck. So if you're interested in Oakley Trucking or just want some more information, you can go to oakleytrucking.com, listen to our weekly podcast, The Oakley Podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel for good news distribution do you guys have any specific needs right now we always have you know the laborers are few we're always looking for more partners to help deliver Bibles and um, um, distribute them 
Um, and financially, of course, it, it does cost money to print Bibles. Uh, How does somebody uh, get involved? Do they reach out to you directly? Or? Yep. We have a phone number of 616-262-6081. We have a website called goodnewsdistribution.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page, Good News Distribution. Um, What's the requirements? What do they know, need? They need to know Jesus and be willing to share the God, you know, hand out materials. We are looking for drivers that help relocate materials like CRI pastors pass away or churches close or churches switch their Bible version and we need to pick them up, you know, three or four cases here. Or, you know, so they need some room on their truck. To... Room in their truck. Some can do it in their cab. I carry plenty in my cab. I have, I have some drivers that carry 30, 40 cases in their cab of our books. Um, do you guys ever do hands-on, like from truck stops, handing out Bibles that way? Telling I do, them? I do, and some of our chaplains do. Yes, we even set up tables and sometimes in front of our trucks during the summer when it's nice out, but or walk the lot and, and ask anybody if they have a Bible in their truck. Or we have real life stories from Step by Step Ministries, a trucker uh, book that has 26 testimonies of truck drivers, and a lot of drivers will take those. And, or just pray with them, yeah. talk, you know, or just listen to them. Mm. John, do you run into much controversy? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and I'm, I guess I mean that as a, uh, you know, can't do that here. Yeah, we that's don't... that's been happening more and more. Is yeah. it really? Yeah, the, the locations are afraid to offend some of the other religions, or you know, if they allow one, then do, do they allow another one? You know, it just. Um, so a lot of materials have been removed from locations over the years that um, some of the ministries I partner with have been doing it for 28 years, 30 years. And, and these racks have been in these truck stops, but, you know, they get bought out or the truck shop changes their policy or doesn't want to offend um, some of their customers so, uh, or don't want to let in other materials. I'd, I'll put our Bible next to the Quran or any other book any day of the week, you know, or, uh, but but they just don't want to have the you know the conflict, so they they remove the racks. And do you find that there's a lot of people who do what you guys do, or you're kind of a lone wolf? Um, no, there's actually about twenty to thirty of us that I know of, you know, and I'm just regional west, you know, from West Michigan. I get out to four or five states, and I don't go real far. But I, I have guys that go around nationally around the country, drivers that are involved, but. I wish there were more, and there probably is more. I just don't know about them or people that have a heart. And it's a calling. I've had a lot of people help for a short period of time, and then it's just not what God's called them to do. And, and I'm not called to do a lot of things either, so I, I, it's what you got to have a heart for it. Before we got on here, me and you were talking for a second about uh, uh, the chapels and not many of those as there used to be around. How, no, they're closing uh, down because about that. the drivers don't have – well, back in the day, we didn't talk to anybody all day unless we put quarters in a payphone at the end of the day and to call our family or whatever. But now you're on a headset all day. You're watching, listening to audio and podcast and having fellowship. You know, you got group calls. We have prayer lines and Bible studies going down the road. So you have a lot of communication, which you didn't have back in the day. So when they got out of the truck, they wanted to go talk to somebody. But um, you don't see as much. And the new Ellie. Or ELD, the logging. Um, when your 14's up, you're tired because you, you, you couldn't stop all day. You couldn't rest during the day, so you run hard the 14 and or 11 drive. And everybody knows the, the hours, but it's by the end of the day you're whipped. <laughs> so you really don't have want to go in a chapel. And, and, um, but there are some good ones out there, but it's just not anywhere near what there were years ago. So. Well, I, I got a feeling you're making a difference though. I hope so. <laughs> I know to some, and I've heard from I've heard from a few, and, and uh, I know God's word doesn't return void. Um, yeah. So we well, just, you're not you're not looking for. No, it's not my record. Yeah. yeah. He does he no. does the closing. I I just do the planning. You know, he does, yep. he brings it up to fruition. Do you keep yeah. in contact with a lot of people that you meet, or do you hear from them after? I do. Yeah, we have a, and we get to meet at events like this, and, and chaplains come down here, or, or partners, and I have a lot of drivers that. Um, art chaplains, they just, I have a lot, even non-Christian drivers that it's a good deed for them to, to haul, pick up a case for us, you know, 
um, or we have printers at different parts of the country, Omaha, Nebraska. I'm always trying to get resources out of Omaha. And I've had drivers that pick them up at Chaplin's. A chaplain will meet them and load them in his truck, and then he brings them to, to me, and then I unload them. And even though they're not a Christian, they, they're doing a good thing, and they get to be... Little be things around like that real, matter. Yeah. yeah. And realize Plain a Christian doesn't have three eyes or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, not, we're not all crazy. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, good. Well, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, not really. Again, Good News Distribution is uh, here to serve others. And, and uh, if anybody would like to get involved with um, help distributing these materials or networking with us, uh, give us a call. And if they just want to talk to you, they can give you a call. Anytime. Yep. Good. I carry my cell all the time. And we'll uh, we'll definitely put the information up on the on the podcast and your website and your name and so they can get phone numbers so they can get in touch with you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And if any driver needs prayer, you know, I'm available. Gary Rayburn from Lonesome Road. I work with Power of God Trucking Ministries, Truck Stop Ministries, Association of Christian Truckers, um, Trucking Angels for Christ for Women, you know. We have, we partner with all these ministries so we can direct them to somebody that can help them in their area. Yeah, we'll try to uh, list all those maybe on the on the episode so they can uh, look through them and, and contact whoever they need to. Awesome. Thank you very much for Thanks, John. taking the time you. to interview me. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you joining us. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Oakley Podcast. Once again, we appreciate it. And if you got questions uh, about the uh, good news distribution, want to talk to John, you give us a call and we'll get you in touch with him. Once again, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week.